Very good afternoon. I am Shilpa and I welcome you all to the CIET NCERT live phone-in program. In this session, we shall discuss about the grandeur and the glory of Vijayanagar Empire. And with us, we have Professor Gauri Srivastav, Professor and Head of the Department of Social Sciences in NCERT. I welcome you, Professor Gauri. Uh, welcome, Shilpa. Namaskar to all of you. Uh, yes. And to the viewers, if you come across any questions related to our today's topic of discussion, then you can call on our toll-free numbers. Numbers are 18001165 and 18001129. You can also send your questions on our official email ID ciet.kishormanch at the rate gmail.com. Moreover, you can comment your questions during our YouTube live streaming which is happening now and our official YouTube channel is NCERT official. So ma'am, first of all, if you could just start uh, telling our viewers what would be the subject matter for our today's session. What all points you will be discussing today? Yes, uh, Shilpa, thank you very much. Today we will be going on a journey of bygone days. We will be discussing about empire and I am sure you must have read in your earlier classes about the great empires that was founded in India. And I am sure you must be remembering just now about the Mauryan Empire. We know so much about it. Now today, let me take you on a journey to the southern part of our country, stretching from the river Krishna deep down the southern peninsula. And you must have read in your class 7, and some of you are in class 12, the glory and splendor of the great Vijayanagar Empire. This empire is also known as, uh, if you translate Vijayanagar, is the glorious glory and the victory of uh, an empire. The city of victory, if we say Nagar, mm -hmm. and now you must be reading about Nagra. So Vijay Nagar uh, Empire was known for its splendor and glory because when you now think about an empire, what makes an empire? Just think about it. To my mind, it comes. We say and call an empire because it has a large expanse of territory. One, it has a strong military base. Third, it is known for its economic prosperity because an empire expands if there is prosperity. There is good law and order situation and it's known for its architecture, music and craft. This goes into the making of the splendor and glory of an empire. Now, all of you must have read about the remains of Hampi. Yes. In 1986, you all know it was declared as the World Heritage Site because of the archaeological remains. Many of you must have attempted questions in your classes as well as you have seen your question papers of the last few years. There are questions based on Vijayanagara Empire, source-based question as well as long answer questions. So this is why this is very important to know about this empire because it is also part of your assessment. Now let us go to the bygone days and see that when you talk about an empire, what comes to your mind? How do we know about an empire? We know about an empire because we have sources. And if you recall my earlier, one of my earlier sessions on sources in history, I said they are sources as well as resources because we do not know about a, a place or people or society unless we tap multiple sources. So for this empire also, we had a lot of sources. What are these sources? Now, you know, there are older oral repository. Oral because they are not written, they are in the memories of people. And you know that when uh, the earliest person who actually uh, started uh, exploring Hampi was uh, uh, Colin Mackenzie. In fact, he was the first to prepare the first survey map and he uh, actually brought into light the empire that was existing in our southern peninsula. Most of you have read stories of Tineli Ram 
Don't, didn't you all enjoy about it? Especially yes. his wit and humor. And today also when we, you are sitting with your parents, your uh, peers, you are talking about how intelligent he was. So we all recall about such things to know what Vijayanagar was like. Now when we talk about oral sources, these are some which are there in the memories of people who talk about the glory and the splendor. The second is the archaeological remain. Vijayanagar is also known for various temples that were constructed during this time. Many of the travelers who visited this place, for example, Nicole de Ponti, Abdul Razak, Nikitin, Pears, Nunes, many of these travelers in their accounts have talked about the Vijayanagar Empire, the administrative systems, they have talked about the fortification of walls. And do you know, at that particular point of time, no mortar or cementing agents were used. How were these uh, huge fortifications surviving till the present time? Isn't this the gift of our archaeological remain, the knowledge of science and technology, of how these walls and uh, continue to exist even to the present time? Then we have inscriptions, inscriptions that also tell us about the administration, the faith people had, how society lived during the time, and then you have the literary works. It is very interesting to know that the literary works that were composed during the period, I will be showing subsequent slides, were written in Sanskrit, they were written in Telugu, they were written in Kannad uh, and Tamil language four languages and you can yourself imagine what a plethora of resources we have to know about the grandeur and the glory of this empire. Then we know about one of the great rulers. You must be talking about, reading about Krishna Devaraya, who yes. was one of the most prominent rulers of this dynasty. Now when you talk of Vijayanagar dynasty, it was not one. It was ruled by several dynasties. You have the Sangama dynasty, you have the Saluvas, you have the Tuluvas, and then the Aravidus. These were the four important dynasties that were ruling the Vijayanagar Empire. Now let us come one by one, because when we talk about an empire and we talk about the remnants of the empire, let us first look into the uh, archaeological remains. And I will first discuss about the temples because temples were a very important uh, contribution of this empire. We have the Krishna temple, which is very famous, Vithan Swami temple, the Hazara Ram temple, then Kuru Tamale Ganesh temple. These were the temples that were constructed during the period. Then uh, we go further, forward. The city was surrounded by fortification. This has also been referred in uh, the travel account. And these fortifications not only guarded the cities, but in between the fortification, we had beautiful gardens that were laid. See how constructively spaces were used then for, for growing vegetables. Then we have beautiful lakes and open gardens, broad roads because roads uh, facilitated transport and they also help in trade and commerce. Then we had the palaces where the kings lived. And these palaces had both public, were meant for both public as well as private audiences. Then the halls, pillars were a very important part of the constructive, construction works that was happening during this period. And these halls were decorated beautifully with paintings, uh, sculptures and they were made mainly of stone and wood. Horses were the most common animal to be depicted on the pillars. I'm sure after you have seen these, uh, uh, this YouTube, please go and see the YouTube. There are many pictures of these beautiful temples that are there. It will inspire you. You may not go for a visit, but you may see it visually and have a treat uh, for your eye to see the splendor of their architectural remains. Now, when we talk of architecture, we also have certain features. What was something very important that stand out uh, and uh, make it a unique Vijayanagar style? This is the monolithic pillars, ornate brackets, 
decorations on the wall. Now, the temples that were constructed were known for their mandapa, open pillars, open pavilion. The temple had Garbhagriha, sanctum cells, where the presiding deity was installed. The Gopurams, the Gopurams were towers, and you can see how beautifully, intricately they were sculptured with live images of men and women. The, the temple building activities of Vijayanagar produced a very unique style called the Vijayanagar style. Now, it's not only the architecture, it's the sculpture because the sculptures are the creation of an artist, of a craftsperson, which makes the uh, sculpture look come alive. Now, if you look at any sculpture, you have life uh, uh, size picture of men, women, god and goddesses. And if you look very carefully, they are expressive. Imagine a, a crowds person working in that particular time. It was not just mechanically, uh, you know, patthar ko tarashna, but putting his whole emotion into that creativity of his uh, creation. And the second thing were horses, as I said, uh, they were also very important part of the uh, construction, then uh, Gopurams adorn most of the Vijayanagar uh, temple. Now, during that time, when these beautiful temples were built, what would, it will come to your mind, what uh, certain questions, what material were they using? Today, when we see a building, we uh, see cements are you being used. Now we are switching to concrete. And uh, those days, what people were using. They were using local granite so, uh, granite uh, stones, soap stones, painted plasters to smooth over and finish the rough surface. So you can see the materials that were used. Now, this is as far as architecture is concerned of temples. We have water tanks because uh, it, they have to help the agriculture. If you have more production in agriculture, you export. And during this time, water tanks were constructed, and the famous tank was Kamalapuram tank, then Hiriya Canal, which was also uh, uh, very famous of, uh, belonging to this period. Then you have another source which is important, that is the literary source, which also talks about uh, the thoughts, the literary taste that people had. And I said in the beginning, the literary works were in Sanskrit, Telugu, Kannad, and Tamil. Now, many of the scholars had penned their ideas during this time. Then some of the most famous who belonged to this empire were Sri Natha, Pothana, Jakkhama, Dugganna, Ganga Devi was a woman. And uh, isn't it a proud privilege for us to know that women were also writing during the period. Then Krishna Devraya himself was a great scholar. Then Dikshita, then Ilu Gandhi Pedana. These were some of the famous uh, scholars of this uh, period. Then we come to trade because trade is also an important part of strengthening the pillars of an empire. Now, what were the important exports of this empire? The important exports were textiles, sugar, silk cloth, iron, spices, rice, and salt eater. The important imports were pearls, horses, copper, coral, mercury, and velvet cloth. Some important merchants whose names were sometimes inscribed were called chetis. The Arab merchants were also uh, important because uh, horses were generally take uh, take uh, uh, for uh, you know military purposes and all. Fairs and festivals have a uh, place in our uh, culture. Even during that time, you know, uh, festivals were observed, and the whole uh, city participated. The Mahanavmi festival, known today as Navratri in the south, was one of the most important festivals that were celebrated during the time. Now, I will specially focus on Krishna Dev Raya because when we think of Vijayanagar, the name that comes to our mind, and you must have read in many places 
uh, about Pineli Ram and Krishna Dev Raya. So he is known as the Andhra Bhoj. Uh, then he was a great builder of temple. He, during his reign, he promoted agriculture. He was the author. Uh, as I told you, there were so many authors. He was also one of them. And he wrote Amukta Malayada, a book on polity in Telugu and Sanskrit uh, drama Jambavati Kalyanam. So you see, he was not only a ruler, a scholar, a builder, and he was the promoter of the cultural heritage of this great empire. He built a city called Naglapuram in the memory of his mother. Then he, is, uh, he built reservoirs across the river Tumbhadra called the Vallabhapuram and a channel called the Basavana were constructed during his reign. So you can see the important contributions made in the area of architecture, made in the area of uh, the welfare of the people, that is construction of canals, he and also promoting trade. So you can relate it with the pillars of strengthening of an empire. You can make a comparison with the earlier work that you have read about the earlier kings. Of course, there cannot be one-to-one -one comparison, but you can yourself know that what is the difference between a state, an empire, and a, a kingdom? That I leave it to you. Now you explore and find out what is the difference, subtle difference between all of them and the uh, city states. So this will give you a fair idea of what the southern uh, uh, empire of us was so famous during the time. Now when you talk about this, one thing more I would like to add about the administration, administrative system because that was also a very strong uh, part of uh, the Vijayanagar Empire, and if you know, you must have read about the Ra Rayas and the Nayakas. And Amar Nayaka was an important major political innovation of the Vijayanagar Empire. The Amar Nayaka were military commanders who were given territories to govern by the Rayas. They collected taxes, they kept some for their own upkeep, and the money that was left was also used for administrative purposes. They maintained contingents of cavalry which some and elephants which were supplied to the king for the warfare purposes. So this uh, system of administration was also facilitating the king and this is how you have an empire that left behind the memories of splendor and glory. And Hampi, as you all know, if you have visited, you can see the remnants and yourself imagine that, yes, we had an empire called the Vijayanagar Empire. Okay. Uh, but ma'am, tell me one thing. What was the contribution of the empire? Now, I have just mentioned to you, the contribution was multifaceted. Okay. You see in the field of architecture, sculpture, your uh, literary works, trade and commerce, you can add administration to it. So if you make a circle, a diagram, you can have all these uh, as a uh, contribution of this empire. In the teaching and learning process, you can also use a variety of materials. You can use a map locating the important places. You can also, uh, uh, you know, locate uh, important buildings and sites where these temples were found. Uh, the second important thing that you can do is write a short note on how to conserve in your own innovative way. When you see them, of course, things are happening. It's not that you're doing, but you can make a short note of it. You can make a small video clipping. You can take pictures and probably write about them. Then each traveler can become a, a subject of uh, research. You can uh, write about them. Uh, from which country did they come? What did they say about the Vijayanagar Empire? You can do that. And one more thing, if you are interested in language, you can start penning your thought by taking any of the work that were written during this period and you can collect further material, translate them to know the idea of what people were writing during this period. Uh, like I told Ganga Devi, she wrote Madhura Vijayam. Then uh, I spoke about Krishna Devraya. 
then uh, many of the scholars were also translating work from sanskrit to the telugu language so that you can see then uh, about the uh, status of women at that particular time uh, people uh, said that many of the women uh, were uh, were taking to dancing uh, some of them worked as domestic servant palanquin bearers and uh, polygamy was also practiced in the royal families so this is also from the one of the travel accounts then uh, one of the travelers also mentioned that sati was also prevalent during this time then uh, you can also if you are interested in uh, art and culture you can uh, explore on painting so as a teaching learning resource you can develop plethora of materials that interests you and you can uh, then uh, uh, talk about the continuity and change many of these sources can be collectively used to uh, ha have your own perspective about this great empire the vijayanagar empire so as a teaching learning resource this is a very important uh, theme that you can work upon uh, you can uh, not now later when you organize a field visit then you can uh, map out uh, what are the places that you are going to see uh, how will you uh, you know prepare uh, your groups divide your work and come up with a very good project proposal on this great empires of us don't leave it there make a comparison with other empires that you know about you can make a timeline a comparative timeline and uh, maybe not of the same period but you can take a subject and uh, empire and then see uh, what was unique in one what was unique in the other and a comparative analysis can also be thought of for making this uh, theme engaging interesting one that you can never forget dialogue between the past and the present is what is the take away from this theme that i am discussing okay uh May uh, ma'am here I would like to take one question the viewers want to ask you the one question has been asked by miss madhulika from lady shri ram college and she wants to ask you that uh, ma'am vijayanagar empire is one of the greatest empire in the down south was used to be but still in the administration hierarchy women had got no dominating position or let's say strata why so now well uh, uh again it is the sources from what we know about now uh, why they did not get it was probably because during that particular time uh, women uh, you know positions were uh, decided by the rulers themselves women were uh, in the domain of culture because they were contributing to literature and all uh, as far as uh, the why is concerned i think both of us need to explore and find out that what Uh, was uh, coming in between but definitely krishna dev raya when he uh, opened uh, started a township he uh, named it after his mother so that is there i mean the recognition is there it's not always holding a position but realizing the worth of what women can contribute is also a recognition if they could write and their works are even known to this day i would rather put it like that they were contributing they had a say and uh, that is how i would answer yours and let's work together and find out about this why yes so madhulika if you will explore something if you will read something you can share that with us and also to the rest of the viewers if you come across any new thing about that today's topic of discussion please do share it on our email id which is cit.kishormanch at the rate gmail.com so professor gauri here people are more curious to know more about vijayanagar empire so they are asking that uh, this question has been asked by mr rupak from karnataka he is asking which factors were responsible for the decline of the greatest empire vijayanagar empire now uh, uh, as far as i am concerned um, i would rather put it through my uh, you know there were a lot of warfare and you know that the last dynasty i mean you have the uh, the, uh, the four uh, you know the warf warfare was one of the reasons for how this dynasty came uh, 
uh, to a decline then the nayakas were becoming very powerful the military chiefs and once they become very powerful the central authority starts getting weak so probably these were two reasons uh, which actually led to their um, uh, you know the, the splendor and glory getting weakened so this i would uh, rather put it that it was the military um, chieftains as well as the combined uh, um, you know the uh, neighboring attacks that took place during this time that weakened this empire okay uh, ma'am i'll take up one more question which has been asked yes. by miss neha from maharashtra and she is yes. asking that uh, uh, what made vijayanagar empire one of the greatest empire though you have explained at the very starting that it was the larger territory military base and the economic these facets uh, yes we have understood were there any other facets too or the aspects too which made vijayanagar yes. the greatest empire and uh, also uh, ma'am yeah. she compared vijayanagar uh, vijayanagar empire with the moguls she say she is saying that they also had the similar things so what made the greatest empire yes. vijayanagar yeah now see every empire is unique in itself we cannot make a uh, one to one comparisons what stands by one uh, of course there are commonalities no doubt because you have uh, as i said in the beginning the making of an empire but there are uniqueness as far as vijayanagar empire is concerned the uniqueness was its contribution towards art and architecture especially the temple building architecture and uh, the the royal palaces the canal systems so this was uh, one that i would like to put across whereas in the other empire there were fusions taking place because when cultures interact the uh, the two cultures have some commonalities here whatever i have read was the certain uh, um, uh, architectural features that were unique empire stands by the unique contributions made by the rulers made by the architectural remains now we need to explore and talk about the uniqueness and that will stand for both of them so that is what i would like to say that uh, when we talk about empires it is the generalized picture that i talked about along with the specific detailing that needs to be explored what was unique in one empire may not be unique in the other so the commonality as well as the uniqueness both have to be put together to understand the making of an empire under different cultures yes and ma'am we should feel glad that uh, viewers are actually participating in they are actually curious to know about the vijayanagar empire so they are uh, actually I, yes ma'am uh, i wish i would have answered the uniqueness more because this is not just one session let me come with your questions and come with the specific observations that you have made and let us once again share this platform to see the uniqueness of vijayanagar vis-a-vis the uniqueness of other cultures that were part of diversity of our country okay so ma'am i'll take up one last question which has been asked by uh, mr satyajit uh, through email he is asking that uh, you talked about sources which included oral repository inscription and literary work so particularly for the inscription you said that it tells us about the society uh, lived during that time how is it interlinked can you just explain it a bit more uh, it it is not uh, you know the way you are asking it's not interlinked but is hmm. knowing uh, the um, uh, empire much better because inscription talks about variety of subjects it talks about law and order it talks about patronages that were made it talks about uh, society it talks about different aspects so the, you cannot interlink but together we construct the knowing of an empire that was what vijayanagar is and i said there are inscriptions across when you want to study about other uh, empires or about other resources they are written in different language many of our temples have lot of inscription they talk about patronage they talk about something about the prevalence of you know uh, the land grant so many things they give us multiple pictures of society so they should be used as part of resources to understand a holistic picture of uh, an empire that we are trying to explore okay 
Ma'am, we are still left with like three minutes, so I'll take up one more question, and uh, it has been asked by Miss Kritika. She is asking that how uh, knowing about the bygone culture will help us in the contemporary world. Oh, uh, well, one of uh, the objectives of teaching history is to have pride in our culture and heritage, and that is how I see when we talk of bygone days. It's also having pride that. when we did not have so much of knowledge of material to use didn't i talk about the cementing were not used now we use cements those days how people were constructing how these gopurams were getting constructed when we did not have cranes i mean imagine seeing those temples how people would get such pillars uh, transported these questions will will uh, provoke you to think that even during those times the aesthetic sense of people was so developed they could create and what is important is they have lived over time even to this day we can though though i mean uh, you can't see those building intact but they still continue to exist the fortification the canal system what all i am talking about is basically uh, you know having pride in what we had and it also gives us how they were uh, you know how they have remained to this day what is so important that uh, you know they have not faded with time they give us an eye view of how uh, technology was during that time literary sources tell us that how a uh, language was developed during that time it's not that we talk of a language but when we write in a language we are actually developing it and they, it was not just one four languages you can think about Now I'm not talking about any one of the sources that you're going to think about. I'm talking about how these uh, languages help us to know about society. A lot of good work I know have been based on literary work, where authors have used these as a source material to understand society under investigation of their own interest. So this is how I see. This is giving you a just a holistic picture, but. opening a pandora box for further researches few questions that have come are very very thought provoking for me and probably you never know it will take me again to a body of researching and finding out more about the grandeur and glory your books have this uh, already given to you one in uh, class 7 and the other in class 12 read more and add on to what you have read you can make a concept map take any concept from from your chapters and start exploring and drawing linkages you can do so much and come out with your own interpretation going beyond what i have said may be educating me more through your own understanding yes so with this we have come to the end of our session so what we have understood today we understood the components of making a uh, empire and empire and about the sources and contribution of the empire and thank you so much professor gauri for being with us namaskar and thank you so much so in the next session we shall talk about the creating animation using wik editor so be with us we will be back after a short while